Okay, so we finished designing our users page. Let's design the chat page now. First thing we're going to need is a back button so that the user can get back to the users page. So let's jump to the layout file in layouts, mylayout.view. Um, we'll stick a back button here, but only on the chat page. So I'm going to jump to the Quasar site and I'll jump to view components, buttons, button. And I'd like something like this with a little icon so we can have a little arrow icon. So I'll copy the source for that. Paste that in here in this toolbar. I'll split up the attributes on this and I'll set the icon here to arrow underscore back. By the way, if you're wondering where I got this icon from, well, Quasar supports all of the material icons out the box. So if you just go to material.io slash tool slash icons, then you can find all the icons here and you can search for them, such as arrow underscore back. And we can see that icon there. So I'm going to add a prop of flat to remove this border. Uh, the text has disappeared. I think I need to remove this color prop as well. And I'm going to add a dense prop to make this a bit smaller. And I'll change the label to back. And we only want this to display on the chat page. So I'll add a V if directive. And we can use that root variable we used before to determine which page we're on. So we can add v if dollar root dot full path dot includes slash chat. Save that. Okay, and we want this to go back, so we can use the v go back directive for that. So if we go to the Quasar site and view directives, go back. Yeah, we can use this vgo back directive like this. So I'll copy that, add it to this back button. And if we jump down to the API, there's a modifier here, single, which will just send the user back to wherever they were before. So I'm just going to use that instead of specifying this path. I'm just going to do dot single. Okay, save that. Okay, let's see if that back button works. Yeah, that's working. Okay, let's add somewhere that the user can type a message to send now. So I'm going to use a queue footer to do this. So I'm going to jump back to the Quasar site and go to Layout and Grid and then Header and Footer. And I'll just grab a basic footer. Copy that. And we'll paste that on our chat page. So we want to open up the page chat view file and I'll paste that in here inside the queue page save that okay now we need a queue input to put in here so back to the quasar site I'll go to components form components and input text field so let's scroll down and see what we can find so I'd like something like this with a little send button on the side. We don't need the avatar and all this stuff at the bottom, but we can just customize it. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleventh one down. So I'll click on view source. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And I'll copy this queue input. And we'll paste it inside this queue toolbar inside our queue footer. Save that. Okay, so we're going to have to customize this quite a bit. First of all, I'll get rid of this avatar, which is inside this template V slot here. And I want to get rid of all these hints at the bottom. So I'm just going to break up these attributes on the queue input. I'm going to remove this bottom slots prop and remove this field hint slot. And I'll remove this counter prop, which is adding this character counter here. And I'll remove the max length prop as well. Uh, this dynamic dense prop, I'm just going to replace that with just dense. And I'm going to remove this timer icon, which is here. 
and I'll remove the close icon as well. So actually we don't need this template bit at all, so I'll get rid of that. Okay, so we want to have a white background on this input, not just a transparent background. So on the Q input, I'll add a prop of BG color, set that to white. And I want this to be rounded, so I'm going to add a rounded prop to this as well. You can find all these props for the Q input on the page we were just on down in the Q input API section. And this send button, I'd like that to be white. I'm going to break up these attributes and add a color prop, set that to white. Okay, we want this to stretch all the way across. So I'm going to add a class of full width to this Q input. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And we'll change the label to message. And this Q input currently has a V model, which is binding it to a property called text, which doesn't exist. So I'm going to change that to new message and create a data property for that down here. So new message, we'll just set that to an empty string. Okay, let's add some messages to this page now. So I'm going to add a class of column to the Q page component so that we can control how the child components fill the available height. And I'm going to create a container to put our messages in. And I'm going to give this a padding class first with Q-PA, padding all, dash MD. And I'm going to add a class of column to make this a flex column. And I'll add a class of col so that it fills the available space within this Q page column. And we need some messages to stick in here. So I'm going to jump to the Quasar site, go to chat message under view components. And I'd like ones like these, which have the names on them. So I'm going to copy the source for that. Copy these two Q chat message components. Uh, paste those inside this container. Save that. Okay. We want these messages to be right at the bottom of this container here. So we can add a class of justify end to push these right to the bottom. And if you want to learn more about these flex classes in Quasar, just go to the Quasar site and then layout and grid and then introduction to flexbox. Okay, so let's add a data property for our messages. So I'm going to jump down to the data object, create an array called messages. And each message is going to need a text property and a from property. And we'll just set the from property to either me or them, depending on who the message is from. So I'll just duplicate this a couple of times. I'll set the middle message to from them. And we'll just add some messages here. So, hey, Jim. How are you? Good, thanks, Danny. How are you? And pretty good. Okay, so we want to bind this array to our QChat message component here. So I'll delete the second one. Um, we'll add a v4 directive to this queue chat message. So v4 message in messages. Um, we'll just set the name to message.from for now. So this will just say either me or them. But we will add users real names to this later on. Um, we'll set the text to message.text. Uh, we need a key property, and for now I'll just set that to message.text because we will replace this with some unique IDs later on. Okay, I'll save that. Okay, our messages have disappeared. We have an error. Invalid prop, type check failed for prop text. Expected array got string. 
okay, this text property is expecting an array. So we can just stick this inside an array like this to fix that. Okay, we can see our messages on the page. However, they're all styled as if they're from me. And this styling is determined by this sent prop here. So if the message is from me, we want to set this to true. And if it's not from me, we want to send it to false. So we can bind to this, add a ternary if statement. So if message dot from is equal to me, then we want to set this to true. Otherwise set it to false. Save that. Okay, that's looking pretty nice now. So let's add the ability to send a message. So if we enter a message and click the button, we want to push a message to this messages array. So first of all, I'm going to stick this Q input inside a Q form component. Uh, I'll add a submit handler to this. You can find out about the Q form component if you just go to view components, form components and form. So I'll add a submit handler and we'll call a method called send message. And in order for this button to work, to submit this form, we're gonna to have to add a type of submit to that. So I'll add type equals submit. And we need to create this method. So we'll add a methods object after the data function. Create our method, send message. Uh, we just want to push an object to this messages array with the text and the from properties. So we can just do this dot messages dot push. And then we'll push an object with a text property, which will be pulled from new message here, which is bound to that import. So text will be this dot new message. And from is just going to be me in this case. So let's save that. Just reload the page, make sure there's no errors. Okay, so let's see if that's working. Hey there. Okay, that's working now. This Q input has been squished up a bit now. So that must be because of this Q form component we've just added around it. So I'll just add a class of full width to that form. And we might be able to get rid of the full width class on the input now. See if that works. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Another thing I'd like to add is a banner at the top, which just says this user is currently offline. Um, so I'm going to jump to the Quasar site and go to view components and banner. And I'll just grab this one here and we'll customize it. And I'll paste that above our messages container. Save that. Okay, I'm going to remove this button section inside this template tag. Remove this inline actions prop. Change the text to user is offline. And I'll change the background color here from red to gray dash four. And I'll remove this text white class because white text isn't looking too great on that gray. And I'll add a class of text center as well to center the text. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we just need a login button in our header so that the user can get to the login page. So I'm gonna to jump to our layout file, mylayout.view, and I'm just gonna copy this back button here, this Q button, paste it after the toolbar title. Uh, we don't need this vif directive. We don't need this vgo back directive. And I'll change the label to login. And the icon I'll use account underscore circle. Save that. And we want this over on the right. So I'll add a class of absolute right. And I'll add a bit of padding to the right hand side of this so it's not squashed right against the side. So I'll add a class of q dash pr for padding right. 
SM for small. And I'm also going to add a no caps prop to stop this being capitalized. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, we want this to send the user to the login page. So we'll add a to prop, set that to slash auth. Save that. Okay, let's see if that button works. Yep, that's taking us to the auth page. Okay, I think we're just about done designing this chat page. In the next video, we're going to design the auth page, the login and register page. Make sure you click my head to subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment. And if you want to grab the source code for this app, go to dannys.link slash code. And if you want to learn all of the basics of Quasar Framework, Vue.js, Vuex and Firebase, then check out my full course at dannys.link slash quasar.